I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Whether you have an agile approach to solution delivery these days or a blend of styles to suit differing needs and domains, the need for all of the disparate change initiatives to reconcile into a single cohesive landscape that supports the end-to-end -end needs of our organizations and their customers remains constant. One way to govern across the various developments has historically been the use of design authorities. Today, regardless of the style of delivery, any portfolio of significance will command and deserve a properly functioning design authority, or more accurately, a series of interdependent design authorities. Whilst having a design authority won't mitigate all the risks of every change initiative in your portfolio, I can attest that of all the major troubled deliveries I've ever seen over the years, a lack of design authority has been a constant missing component and 100% has contributed to the scale of the issue, regardless of delivery approach or method. Bottom line, Good guidance is always good guidance, whether, whatever way you choose to develop or deliver your solutions. But good governance is essential to exploit that good guidance and needs to be planned in with the DAs in to suit. A fire and hope approach is simply naive. Welcome everybody to this episode of Toolkit Tuesday. It's great to have you with us. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. And a big thank you to Paul Homan there with wise words as ever. Um, absolutely, design authority is required, whatever your um, working style or practice. So uh, thank you for sharing that with us, Paul, and for all the others you've done so far um, on this season and uh, and our previous season at the Toolkit Tuesday. Um, to our attendees, again, thank you for joining us. Um, really glad to have you with us. Our main topic today will be the portfolio of digital open standards, which you may have heard about uh, a little before, but what we're gonna show you today um, will uh, be uh, demonstrating the great progress that we've made on this since we first spoke to you about it. Um, so in just a few minutes, I'll, I'll start that um, uh, start introducing uh, Sonia Gonzalez, who will be our speaker today. But just a little bit of housekeeping uh, beforehand. Uh, if you have questions for Sonia today, then please put them in the Q and uh, the QA channel um, in the WebEx tool. If you can't see that on your screen right now, then uh, please go to the three dots in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, and that will give you the chance to click on the QA channel. And if you um, uh, would like to communicate with the other attendees and participants on the uh, broadcast today, then do so please in the chat channel. Uh, as regulars will know, we love to uh, love to hear where people are joining us from. It's usually quite a, a diverse uh, set of geographies, and um, we love we love hearing where you're all joining us uh, joining us from. So please uh, do that. Some of you are doing that in the chat channel. I can see that as as I go on. Um, so that's about it for the housekeeping. So without further ado, um, let's move to our topic today, the portfolio of digital open standards. So uh, we've spoken about this at a number of open group events and we've had a previous episode of Toolkit Tuesday um, uh, dedicated to this, um, but we've really uh, worked hard on on making progress and making this real so it's not just a not just a thought in our minds uh, or in our members minds but something real and today um, we will get a demonstration of uh, real navigation through the 
uh, open, the portfolio of digital open standards. And to do that today is uh, Sonia Gonzalez Paredes, who is the digital pro uh, portfolio manager here at the Open Group. And prior to this, Sonia was the TOGAF product manager, and she has more than 30 years experience as a business and enterprise architecture consultant in different fields and industry verticals. Sonia's professional experience as a project manager includes leading highly effective teams, applying different frameworks, best practices and tools. And today, obviously, uh, Sonia will be focused on the open group portfolio of digital open standards and demonstrating um, the the value that bringing these things together can bring. So a warm welcome from Toolkit Tuesday, please, for Sonia Gonzalez. Over to you, Sonia. Thank you very much. Uh, it's Steve, for that warm welcome and just get into it. I will start sharing my screen now. Okay, so you're actually seeing here the real thing, which is the portfolio of digital open standards. Let me try to put this in in extended mode so you can see it better. Okay. Enter for the screen. So here it is. So again, welcome everyone to this session today. I'm going to lead you to the to the portfolio of digital open standards. And uh, the first question you may be asking yourself, what it is the portfolio of digital open standards and what you should care about is, what's the value proposition? And those are exactly the same question that we have been asking ourselves when we put this product together, this digital platform. And the response is like, has uh, we have said before, in many other occasions, the open group standards, the portfolio of standards that we offer as open group are meant to be used to transform organization into a digital space. And they are very powerful on their own. However, they are become even more powerful when they are used together. So what we are offering with this portfolio is a way to consume them together in one single digital platform, which is the one that I'm showing right now. And uh, for doing that, we have put all these standards in one single place to make them more discoverable and easy to be consumed. So that's where part of the value proposition. The other one, of course, is for this content to be relevant. Therefore, uh, all this content that you will, that I'm going to present in here, it's already in our library. So all this is approved content. And I'm going to start the practical demo now. Uh, important also to mention that this portfolio is already in our website. So you can get into there, I'm going to show uh, at the end of the presentation, how you can actually navigate and give us your feedback. So first, why is this important and what we should care about this? So you will see here in the left part of the menu that I'm showing right now, you will see the whole list of portfolio of digital open standards that we are showing. So we are here, the glossary of world, which is something that we have put together to pursue more consistency, because also part of the value proposition is consistency. We have here over the years that it is good to have different definitions because every practice will have their own point of view, but it's also important for them to be consistent. So this cross of recent roles is one piece of content that we have put together that is aimed to do that. And I'm going to also show that in the, in the demo. We also have other content in here. We have the digital practitioner body of knowledge. I'm going to refer to that as a DP book in the rest of the demo. We have the IT for IT version three, which we recently also released and launched in October. We have the open IR architecture. You will see all the content in here. We have the principle of open digital standard, which is one of the fundamental documents. And of course, we have uh, the TOGAF standard 10 edition included into this portfolio. So the value proposition is all the standards used in one single place. Uh, of course, all of them are very valuable. You have them in the library, but it's easier for them to be consumed in one single place that instead of going into the library and downloading all the different PDFs. So for example, and I'm going to start showing how you can navigate through this platform. In the left menu of this, you will see the list of the standards. So here you will see the, the digital practitioner body of knowledge, the DP book, and you can start clicking in here and actually you're seeing the actual content of the standard. And you can navigate through the different part of that. Just in the left menu, you can either go to the to the IT for IT version three standard. You can go over the TOGAF 10 standard edition or the OAA or any of the other content. Important also to mention that we'll be releasing anybody in October 
as what we have called the minimal viable product, meaning that this list of standards is meant to be growing. So the more standards we'll be adding into this platform, the more value will be offered to our community and our members. In order to do that, we need members' contribution, of course, and we are pursuing a lot of cross-cutting collaboration between forums. And that's another part of the value proposition, consistency and synergy among the standards. So I mentioned also that all of them are visual and easier to be found. So we are already seeing like all of them are here together. So no need to go into the library or any other place to see the different standards. But the other part of the value proposition, I'm going to go back to the main landing page, which is this one, is the possibility of having visualization for this, which is something that I'm sure you're going to find pretty useful. So in here, the ones that you are familiar with the DP book, you will notice that this is the scale model in which we have from the founder all the way to the team, team of teams, or the, or the enduring enterprise. So if, for example, I'm using the platform, I'm interested to know what it is about uh, the enterprise level, just clicking here, and I'm making a zoom in another mapping. And this is just not graphics. For example, if I want to know what about architecture at the enduring enterprise, I click in here, and I'm actually seeing the real content of the standard in here. So, and you may notice that in the upper part of the navigation, I'm actually seeing the exact components. So in here, the other part of the value proposition is like, we are, the boundaries between standard don't exist anymore in here. You are just solving your problem, your business problem in this case, to support digital transformation. It doesn't matter if the content is in the DP book or in the IT for IT or the open higher architecture or the TOGA standard. So this is one way to navigate. And uh, you can also come back to the previews. Let me go back again. Probably it's easy to make this and uh, not in full screen to order to show the navigation. So you can go back into the previous one and navigate also using the arrows. The other important element for this besides the navigation is cross-linking. You know, right now, if you're using a PDF version of the standard and you click, uh, for example, you are in the Open Agile Architecture in the OAA, and you click to see the talk of content, you will be directed to the library, which is great. You can download the PDF or use the HTML or digital version, but you need to go over other documents. So what we are also using in this platform, by the way, the technology we are using is GitLab and Tora, which are both open source, and we are heavily working on that, is to pursue two cross-linking between content. And I'm going to show you an example. Uh, let's take, for example, this one, which is the principles document, and let's try this on. For example, here, this is another document that we have in the portfolio, also approved and published content. And in here, you will notice that this uh, is one one link we have in here, origins and practices of agile development. So if I click in here, I will be actually seeing the real content, which is in this case, into the DP book. So instead of having to go into the library, I can navigate between standards. You may be asking, how are you going to do this? Because you have several, several forums and, and several standards in here. So the reason is we need to start working together to make this cross-cutting and those cross-linking more effective. Going back to the visuals again, we have several visuals. The ones of you that are familiar with the IT for IT standard may be familiar with this. So again, this is another way to explore the standards. For example, if I'm interested in the exploring value stream, I just click in here and I can see the actual content, which is showing up in the top part of the menu. You will see this is the explore value stream into the IT for IT standard, which is exactly the same that is showing up in the left menu. So going back to the navigation, you can navigate using the visual mapping we are offering. That is also something that we are uh, interested in growing. The more visual we have, the more appealing this would be and easier to be used. You can either use that, you can use the left menu if you want to navigate either through the same standard or through a different standards. And also, since all of this, you may have noticed that all this is web-based HTML content, you can also use um, either go into here and browse into the same content, or you can also use the right menu to move into the different parts of the same page. So there are very dynamic ways of doing this. Some of these pages are very large, so this right menu is very useful for that. The other value proposition, which is very important, is to start working in components. As you know, some of our standards are big components, are big, big documents, big uh, bodies of knowledge because they hold practices like enterprise architecture or IT management. So they are big. And over the years, have been, we have been struggling trying to release sooner into the market. 
So what we are, what we are doing, and it's happening in all forums connected with this strategy, is to go for a smaller component and to be delivered faster into the market following an agile approach. And we are also working to offer a platform that will allow us to do that along with our forums. And we have had a few pilots on this. So that's the other big element in the value proposition, componentized, searchable, discoverable, easier to be used, and visual. Again, the, the engagement of our members, it's important for us. If you're not a member, also your feedback and your, your adoption is very important for us. I'm also going to show something that it's, for me, it's my favorite, which is the search facility. And in order to do that, let's suppose that I'm, I'm a practitioner and I want to pursue this transformation in my organization. And I know, okay, I need to start first trying to define new digital offering. So that is appealing for me to be giving into the market. So I can make a search, for example, experiment design. And you may notice that already I have content that it and that's to be, it's related with experiment design. Content that comes from the open agile architecture, definitions of the glossaries and roles, and also content from the IT for IT standards. So if I click in this one, just the first one, this is the actual content. So in here I can find, okay, problem space, solution space. I can also use the either navigate into the page using this, or I can also use the right menu. So, okay, what about jobs to be done? This is information about jobs to be done. This is information about how to design my digital products. If I want to know what it is in another standard, I can use the, uh, this arrow in here and I'm back again into the search and I can also navigate in other content. For example, I also have a product design functional component in the IT for IT standard. So I click in here and I'm actually seeing the content of the standard where this lives. You may have noticed that in the navigation, I'm already positioning in here. So you can easily navigate through the standard. Or again, you can go into the rest of the different components in this page. So this search facility is really the best way to find information quickly. And again, no boundaries anymore. It doesn't matter where the content is, you're just solving your problem. Another one, for example, product design is another one that is also design thinking, which is, as you know, an important part when you are designing and going to want to provide more innovation. Let's say that, okay, what about agile, agility? Okay, I want to find something about agility. So I click in agile, and of course, the first one that will pop up in here is the open agile architecture, agile organization, agile governance, agile and architecture. So again, I can navigate in here and, and I can either use the right or left menu. In terms of agility, of course, we have a lot of agility into the Togo Standard 10 edition. So the Togo Standard 10 edition is also a key part of, of this portfolio. You may be familiar with this, which is the TOGA Standard 10 edition. And we have several guys now around that. For example, I have in here the, the Agile Methods Enabling Enterprise Agility, which talks a lot about agility and product management. And the other element that it is important, as you know, to be addressed whenever you are becoming digital is complexity. And what better to address complexity than using the TOGA ADM to address with complexity and the scope management and all that. So again, all this is content that is into the portfolio. Coming back to our search facility, let's then make another one. Uh, what about the digital backbone? I need to have a digital backbone in order to offer my products and services in, in a digital way. So let's try that, digital backbone. And here again, I have definition, what is a digital product backbone from the, in this case, the, the, the IT for IT version three standard. I have more definitions in here. And also I can look for further definition in the glossary of roles, also in the digital partitional volume of knowledge and in the rest of the standard. So let's go into the open group. This is the definition that we have in the IT for IT standard. And we can also go further and continue browsing. This is again, more definitions or you can also go into the actual content of the standard. For example, in here, we are already have some examples of what it is a digital platform. So uh, I wish I would have more time to show you this, but I think you will have an idea about how to navigate, how to use the search facility. Again, this is already live in our website. So just I invite you to go ahead and, and try it on and give us your feedback. And you may be asking, how am I going to give you feedback? So in here, that's the beauty of this, you will see this small icon in here that is visible 
it doesn't matter in which page you are, you, just, you can click in here and you will be seeing a very simple form in which you can add your comments. It doesn't matter if they are around content or the structure of the usability of the customer experience of the platform or any other. You just can uh, send your feedback. You will receive an email that you, your feedback has been received. And this will create an issue in the lab that we are going to address with our members or internally, depending on the kind of, of issue. So this will allow us to continue improving this in an incremental way. So again, wrapping up a little bit, you know, all of our open group standards are powerful. They are relevant, they are fit for purpose, but they are even more relevant whenever they are used together and they are being leveraged each other and working in synergy. Finally, before going into the q and I'm going to show you where you can find this in our website. And you may be familiar with this page, which is our digital portfolio page into the website. So in here, you will find this banner. And if you click in here, grow in the digital organization, you will be, first you need to, to accept these terms and conditions, which for us are very important. You need to see that you agree in them. Then you submit this. And if, in this case, I was already uh, logged in, but you need to log in. And meaning that if you, don't, if you are new and you don't have an account for us, you can create an account that's completely free, by the way. If you are a non-member, you can create your account and that will also give you access to the library and to other resources. And uh, whenever you have done that, this is exactly what I was showing. This is the landing page. And again, you can start playing around with this. So this is what I have for today. I would really like to give some time for Q&A. And again, if you need to know more, again, send us your feedback. You can drop me an email. And we'll be more than happy to provide a response for that. Uh, over back to you now, Steve, in case we have some questions. Sonia, thank you very much. Um, I, I've seen you uh, demo this uh, live at our Edinburgh event and thought that was brave, but doing it over the uh, over the internet as well is very brave to do, but it just shows that it works. So uh, great job on demonstrating it and um, and thank you for, uh, for talking us through it. I know it's a, a very brief time uh, allotted, but you've given people a real sense of uh, how navigable it is. And uh, like you, I love the search um, facility and the, and the cross-linking, uh, it, it really does make a difference to the usability of the standards. So thank you for that and, um, and to everyone involved in uh, really, uh, really driving this forward. It's, uh, it's been a lot of work and uh, there's a lot still to do, but, um, but great progress. So um, in, in terms of, of questions, um, one of the ones that we, uh, we get asked, um, uh, have been asked before, um, is how does how does the uh, how do the standards in the portfolio how does that relate to the open group library because we always point people to the open group library to 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 get open group content so how do how do they relate or or are they connected in some way okay first is the same content so like i mentioned all these that you see here is approved content and the same will happen whenever we are increasing with more standards and more information in here so the same content is in the library the library has always been and will be relevant and important for us because it's a very rich collection of information for you. So, for example, you can use this platform to navigate to the standard in a dynamic way. But, for example, let's say that in one of the searches, I found a lot of information about experience, experience design, for example. But then I want to know more that offline so I can download the PDF. Or I can just, if I'm just interested in that specific standard, I can also use the digital version, the digital edition that also has searches, by the way. So either way, in both cases, information is there. It's the same information. It's equally valuable. So they both are connected in that sense. And actually, the other importance of the library is like, you may have noticed that in here, and that's part of the intent, there is no more book structure because this is not a book structure. It's a platform. It's a digital portfolio platform. In the PDF, you will see the formal structure, which is very important for us for a certification, because of course, for learning outcomes and all that, you need to map with a formal structure. That's why we are keeping both the, to the two different outputs, either the one in the portfolio or the ones in the library. Okay. Um, next question, Sonia, probably the last one given the time, but um, we have a very um, global community at the at the open group and um, and indeed here at uh, at our toolkit Tuesday um, broadcast. So um, question: 
How does the localization activities that we do for our standards and other uh, other publications, how will that feed into the uh, to the portfolio? OK, that, that's an excellent question. And actually, that is something that is in our roadmap ahead uh, by next year, even though you, might, you may imagine there's a lot in that roadmap. But since localization is one of the things that it's most important for us in general, not only for the portfolio, but in general, to pursue adoption and awareness. So what we are going to do is like, uh, and uh, we are going to continue working with our members and contributors in the translation of this and, and probably going a step further away on that and putting this in different languages. That is something that we can do. The technology is there. We just need to have contribution from our members for translation and other contributors that we have had over the years. And of course, also uh, that implies internal work for us maintaining this platform to make that happen. So the response is yes, it is in our roadmap. It is ahead for next year. It will take uh, time and effort, of course, but above all, it will take also our members' engagement. Right, which leads me. I will. This is right, right on cue. A question, questions come in. I like the initiative. Um, how do I get involved in the activity? Okay, great question. The one that I want to hear first. If you're a member, uh, you can. The digital practitioner working group, which is the one that maintains this platform, is open to all members. It's a working group. So, drop me an email, and I can more than happy to onboard you. If you're not a member, uh, you can send us your feedback because this is open. This feedback is public. The one that I show. This small icon that you see here is, is for the public. It's not only for members. And, and of course, if you are interested in becoming a member, you can also drop me a note and I will be sure to address your, your needs with your well business development team. So either way, you can contribute to us. Uh, the other thing that also will be very valuable if we are, you are a non-member is that uh, we are also open to receive use cases and case studies. And you, need, you don't need to be a member for doing that. Also, blogs are something that we can receive. And uh, participation in our either virtual or face-to-face -face event is another one. The other thing that also, even though we have done that for now only with Archimate, uh, the, we have an Archimate open community that also, it's the word is saying is open to the public. And if you're interested in that, uh, let me know and I can connect you with Kelly Cannon, Marcology. She's the one working on that. And, and probably it would sense that that is something that is interesting. We can create other open communities as well. Great, great, Sonia. We will leave it there. Um, thank you very much for um, showing us the great progress. And uh, again, well done to the members and staff involved in this. Um, great job. Thank you for joining us, Sonia. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending today. Thanks, Steve. Take care, everyone. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. So um, so that's largely it for today. Um, just a plug for next week. Um, uh, in fact, two weeks time, um, doing something a little different. So December the 13th, um, you're, I'm going to be um, host and presenter because we've had really quite a, a significant number of uh, of major releases of new versions of standards and updates to our certification program uh, in the in the last six months or so. And uh, although we've covered some of those on Toolkit Tuesday, I'm going to take the time to uh, do a, a whistle stop tour of some of the highlights of those. Um, in case you've missed things and probably some new things that you uh, ha that haven't been covered previously. So in in two weeks time, December 13th, you'll get uh, more of me, I'm afraid. But um, for now, uh, thank you for joining us today and hope to see you in two weeks and uh, appreciate your attendance and uh, and questions and all your uh, contributions. I'm Steve Nunn. This is Toolkit Tuesday. Thank you for joining.